be leaning backwards and not forwards. <laughs> How long was that? <laughs> like one minute, 20 seconds. <laughs> Beneath the surface lies a world of tranquility and adventure. Free diving, the art of exploring the underwater world without the aid of scuba gear, is a journey of self-discovery. Join us as we dive into the secrets of free diving with Marian, the deepest free diver in the Philippines. Hey everyone, we're here in the Loan Cebu, Philippines at the GTNA Recreational and Event Center. Joining us today is free diving local legend, Marian, who will be sharing with us his secrets to breath holding. So hi, my name is Marion. I'm uh, 36 years old. I'm a multiple national record holder for free diving in the Philippines and also an instructor trainer. I've been free diving already for the past seven years and I've been actively teaching for the past six years. And uh, I've also been competing for the Philippines in free diving for the past three years. Hailing from Cebu, Philippines, Marian is a renowned freediver who carries multiple national records. His deep dives has solidified his status as a leading figure in the country's freediving community. I currently hold the deepest record for constant weight. Uh, my record before was 84, so the new guy just added one meter to my existing record. He basically was also still my student. In the next few months, I'm aiming to do 90 or 95 meters, hopefully. That's why I'm training most of the time now. Free diving is as much a science as it is an art. Understanding how the body reacts to breath holding is crucial. Mastering breath holding is a skill that requires practice. Marian will guide us through essential techniques. So now I'm gonna get in the pool with Marian and see if I could learn something new about breath holding. Let's dive in. So first is the breathing part. You have to breathe as normally as you can. So it's called tidal breathing. So no forceful inhale, no forceful exhale. Through my mouth or my nose? Yes, through your mouth. Inhale and then exhale. Relax, inhale again, and then exhale. It shouldn't be like too fast as well. It should be as normal as it can be. Just try to think you're just sitting down somewhere so that your breathing should go back to normal. Don't think about your breathing like how so that you don't control it. So I'm gonna do the, the tidal breathing. And then uh, how long will it take? Uh, it just depends on me when I'm ready. Yes, yeah, so my final like breath. relaxation phase, it depends. It varies from person to person. For me, like the best two, three minutes should be fine. Or as long as you feel that your body is already relaxed, you can feel your heart rate okay. already slow down. So it depends on the person. There's yes, no it, like... it, it could be good already to do your breath. Yeah. So once you try to breathe, you also have to do a very simple body scan of your body. You have to make sure you scan your body from top to bottom to see if any part is tense. If it's tense, you have to release the tension to make your body more relaxed. And you have to relax so that when you try to relax, your heart rate slows down and try to get ready for you to do your breath hold. This time, Daddy, you can try to do a quick body scan. You just have to relax your arms. You have to do a body scan from top to bottom. Check your toes, check your knees, check everything to see if it's relaxed, especially your shoulders, your neck. That's one of the best things you can do to make sure that no part of your body is tense. The more relaxed you can be, the more your body will be able to conserve oxygen. Basically, when it comes to holding your breath, a lot of people would think that it's very complicated. So you have to make sure that every part of your body, not just your body, but also your mind is, needs to be relaxed. For you to be able to relax properly, you have to think about your breathing. Because breathing basically controls everything inside our body. The way we breathe makes us react to what we do. Basically, relaxing your body will impact more your heart rate because our heart is the main muscle or organ that provides blood carrying oxygen to our body. The more it pumps blood, the more it uses oxygen, the, the shorter you can hold your breath. The next part would be visualization. A lot of people think that when you hold your breath, you just have to hold your breath, right? You have to think, you have to visualize yourself already holding your breath when you do your preparation for your breath hold. 
for your body to basically try to remember that you already did it on your mind, but your body didn't do it yet, so that your body reacts better. Because most of the time, the most common thing that happens is that there's a very big stress factor when it comes to us holding our breath. But because we are already priming our mind that we will be doing something, it is already getting ready to do that kind of thing. Preparation-wise, you have to make sure that you're doing your normal breathing, what we call tidal breathing, and also visualize that you will be holding your breath so that your body doesn't really react to stress factors that you haven't done the dive yet. You're basically priming your mind to make sure that your body is ready to do what you need to do when you are already holding your breath. So when you're ready, you do a full big breath and try to relax your body. Relax your arms, let go of your feet. You have to relax your feet. Safety is paramount in free diving. Understanding your limits and practicing with a buddy is essential. Yeah, so when it comes to safety, you have to make sure that you're not diving alone. That's the most important part. And you have to make sure that you're diving with a qualified buddy. When, when I prepare for courses or classes or training, I have to make sure that my body is capable of doing an actual rescue if in case something happens. It's very rare in training that something usually happens because we try to progress as conservatively as we can. So in safety part, especially when someone is doing static, you have to make sure that their body is gonna be just floating near the surface. You have to make sure that they'll be able to grab something before they come up. So the best thing you can do is make sure that his body is not gonna be floating too far or not gonna be floating too near that they're gonna bump their head. That's one of the safety things that you have to remember when it comes to doing static in the pool. So now Danny is holding his breath. Once he feels something, like say his urge to breathe, he will start to put his hands here on the edge of the pool so that he can continue and I should be able to see any telltale signs if he needs to come up already or not yet. Another safety tip that you can ask if your friend or if your uh, student still continues to hold their breath, you need to be able to do safety checks. A very simple, easy check to know if, if the, the diver holding his breath is still there is by doing this. Meaning you ask Danny, lift your left finger if you're still okay, right finger if you're still okay, both fingers if you're still okay. So you do that kind of safety checks maybe around every 20 or 30 seconds, it depends. So that's one good way to know if the diver is still okay. Instead of giving an okay sign, which will consume a lot of oxygen because you're using a lot more muscles, lifting the fingers a lot easier. I haven't held my breath in a while. <laughs> Dude, that was so sick though. I feel like I can hold my breath forever, dude. Whoa, that feels good. Oh my god. Hey, your body's good. priming up already. Yeah. yeah. I felt good. I, I didn't feel any contractions yet. When it comes to doing dives, I mean, one of the factors would be equalization. So you have to be able to clear your ears because pain is also a stress factor that could affect your certain nervous system to make you more stressed and make you not be able to hold your breath longer. So you have to be able to equalize properly. For you to be able to equalize better, you have to equalize before feeling any kind of pain. Meaning you have to equalize as frequently as you can. For beginners, we would advise them to try and slow down and not to like go down really fast so that their equalization can catch up. And when it comes to streamline as well, everything should be tucked in. Finning should not be too wide. It should be within uh, your body's hydrodynamics for you not to create a lot of drag, especially when you're underwater. But the biggest stress factor would be that would impact more your breath hold would be your equalization. So the tips that we are, I could give you, try to practice your equalization dry before you go into the water. When you are in the water, try to as much as possible equalize as frequently as you can before you feel any kind of pain. Relaxation will always be the key to make your dives a lot better. When it comes to free diving, it's almost the same thing as any other kind of sport. You have to just do it more. You have to do it in volume. You have to do it religiously you have to do it more consistently for you to be better at something discipline would always be the best thing like do things when you feel like you don't want to do it because that's how discipline works not just because okay i feel better today i'm gonna do it i don't feel better today i'm not gonna do it discipline is like the best thing when i had injuries because i was like doing a lot of adrenaline stuff i did try yoga and one of my yoga instructors was a freediving instructor she basically told me, oh, you should try freediving. This is like a very different sport from all the sports that we tried. So when I tried it, I got hooked for reasons that 
it was more the hype was better every time you try to go dive and try to go deeper like the accomplishment you get from it especially when you're going down there but the best thing that i was able to experience was that the silence underwater is very different from the busy noise that we always hear here on the surface that's why i got hooked into free diving this session with marion i've definitely learned a lot about relaxation and body scanning free diving offers an unparalleled connection with the ocean by mastering breath holding and understanding your body, you can unlock a world of wonder. I can't wait to apply these techniques on my future dives. And that's it for Marion's tips in breath holding. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.